Bengals with a huge win over the Buffalo Bills. We'll talk about that coming up next on the Winston Podcast. It's an exciting time to be a Bengals fan. I'm AC Zell. We got a special show as always. The voice of the Bengals. Hello, Dan world. Ford. Willie Anderson. Corey Dillon. The name of this thing is called Winston and I'm not going to stop Talk to us about that roller coaster season. I'm still gonna give you the same AJ. I'm gonna work as hard as I can to be the best. Always working here since I met y'all, boy. Yeah. I gotta get you a top five receiver. <laughs> Water, man. It was good. Bro, watch out for us. Welcome, welcome to the Winston Natty Podcast. I am Ace. He is them. Your Cincinnati Bengals. Back in the winter circle again. It's been a minute, man. It's been a minute since we've taken that L. We've been in the winter circle for four straight weeks. It's been a while, man. Zim, how you doing, brother? Man, I'm doing really good, bro. I'm, I, I just was talking a little bit, of, a little bit of trash, so I'm feeling really good about everything. But I don't know. I mean, we're gonna get into the game. Not as we'll, we'll talk about it. I'm really happy that we won. Like you said, we're in the winter circle, so here we are, baby. Like back where we're supposed to be the whole entire time. No, for sure. So like Zem said, we'll talk about the game. We'll get into some some Bengals topics. Uh, we'll talk about the season as it's gone. Um, so we'll get into all of that coming up next. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! All right, man. The Cincinnati Bengals beat the Bills 24 to 18. We kind of felt like this is – me and you kind of felt like we had their number, right? Like this was a team where the Bengals obviously coming off of that playoff win. Um, that was uh, a huge win. But coming into this season, the Bills have been kind of up and down. Bengals caught them at a good time. How did you feel about like just the environment coming into this game? Because they striped out the jungle. The fans did that. I know some people are trying to say, oh, the Bengals planted nah, not. The fans, the fans pretty much planted it and pulled it off. Uh, but talk about like the environment of that game and, and just from your vantage point, how you felt about it. I just I, I was so sick. That I wasn't there, but I'm so glad that everybody shared all their different, uh, you know, moments there. And they had a ball. They represented. They did everything that they were supposed to to represent, um, you know, like and just lighting that place up. It's like a college atmosphere at, at Paycor now. Like I remember going back to the all white game last year, the Dolphins game. Mm -hmm. And just some of these moments that we're creating along the way is starting to get like really, really special. I, I look at pictures sometimes of like our like just the guys that we got. And I just and I start to smile because I'm like, man, like, you know, we've had teams where it'll be like a player or two you might like or a cornerback that you like. But then I'm, I'm like looking at the whole secondary like, When have you ever had a bail team in a woozy is like your CB3? Like, that's right. crazy to me. Or, like, just pictures of Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, and Jamar. Like, and I think about all the time that, you know, like, from the first time me and you went out with them and all, all these different things that have happened. And I just be like, man, this is what it was supposed to be all this time when you get that quarterback at the helm. And I'm, I'm just really, really happy that uh, we're, we're at a spot where it's consistently a great product. Yeah, and I think that's, like, when me and you first talked – putting this podcast together, we talked about just making the Bengals dope, like just making it cool to be a Bengals fan. And when you look up and you see on social media that Corey Dillon's in the natty, hanging out with people, Willie Anderson's there, Ocho's there, you know, all of this dope stuff, striping the jungle. Like you just said, we have one of those environments. I don't think people want to really come to play core and play on the road. It's a tough environment, causes people to call timeouts. It's very loud. Um, we even travel now. Like, I think back to that game last year in Tampa. I think back to the San Francisco game, which we already know, like, San Francisco might be one of the biggest fan bases in the NFL. They're up there with the Cowboys and Steelers. And I heard who days and tease all through the TV screen. So it's definitely a dope time to be a Bengals fan. Uh, and I think that the Bengals right now, especially with this game, we're stacking wins, but we're stacking statement dubs, right? Like you're going out and doing this against a team like the 49ers that has been 
uh, perennial NFC championship contender. Before the Bengals took off, the Bills, you could say the same about them in the AFC, right? They were a team that always got there. And the Bengals, I felt like in this game, just, just pretty much handled them, bro. Like, I know that we all feel like there should have been some, some points left out there. But to me, to me, from the top level, looking at this game, I never at one point in this game was, like, kind of worried. Like, I never felt like the Bengals weren't in control. And I know, like, a lot of people are going to talk about, like, oh, we should have scored here and there. I personally felt like I don't have Andy Dalton anymore. So when Shiesty got the ball back with three minutes, me personally, I'm like, it's over. Like, you know what I mean? Like, for me, like, it's Shiesty. Like, I know Shiesty's not giving the ball back to Josh Allen and the Bills. Uh, what were your thoughts on that? Did you feel like, you know, the Bengals should have just blown them out? Or did you feel like shiesty has got the ball? I know he's going to cook. I'm not really – I know you kind of said in spaces you, like – kind of left some meat on the bone a little bit pause yeah yeah um it, it it reminds me of and i never really understood it and i guess i get it now you ever run into somebody that talks about the rams and what they should have did to win the game mm -hmm. and, and beat it? it i guess it's not the same because the Bengals and rams super bowl was really competitive like Bengals had a lead but i always talk to people uh, or you'll always see people online that be like, yeah, the Rams, if they had Odell, they would have beat you by 20. I'm like, why aren't y'all just satisfied with the win? But I guess that's the belief when you just know that you're a lot better. And I think they thought they, the Rams thought they were a lot better. They they were an okay team. I, I don't know. I still, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to go back to the Super Bowl. But, the, but right now, I walked away from that saying T. Higgins, you know, falling at the four-yard line. You right. know, the, the, the Joe Mixon – Swing pass to the outlet. Dude does a fantastic job of tipping at the line of scrimmage, but that's a walk-in touchdown from Joe Mixon. You got the Jamar Chase deep ball that Joe Burrow underthrows, and Jamar Hurts is back in the process. There are so many plays. You got the Tyler Boyd one that gets broken up at the last second. You got another Jamar one. Bro, there, there's like four or five plays that I'm literally looking at and saying, bro, like they could have got a touchdown or a phantom, you know, whatever. And that's just something to – for me to build off of and say, look, this is what we got to do better in these areas. I don't really look at it like, man, I'm I'm upset we didn't put 30 on them, but I'm just kind of evaluating like how good is our offense? How could how good can we really be? And I think that now the Bengals are in this mode where they're not showing teams everything now. A lot of people walked away from that game and said, why aren't they going under center a lot more in that game? I think that they got a lot of stuff that they're going to run out of under center. And the crazy thing that this is like a full circle moment, and I never thought I would be saying this, everything that I've been saying in the summertime about bringing a tight end to go in line to the formation, the reason why I wanted Mayer so bad is because I was like, it's a no tell. Like, I don't, you know, you don't, the defense doesn't know is the guy going out or whatever. Think about it. Even when Drew Sample dropped the pass a couple weeks ago, or was it last week? Or even when Drew Sample messes up, right? He's always open in those instances. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I wish it was Mayor or I wish it was Kincaid or whatever. But that's not even a point. The crazy thing is defenses don't know, is he going to go out? And when he does go out, like how he did in the game on Sunday against the Bills, mm -hmm. I mean, he's wide open and he just has to capitalize on those opportunities. And let's say he's, and let's say he's a bum like I always thought he was, right? I think he's okay, right? The craziest full circle moment is the whole summer, everybody talked about um, a P. Ryan replacement in the form of a running back. Right. A lot of people be, people been talking about um, how Joe Mixon needs to pair up with a running back. And I'm, 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 I'm kind of on that train too. But what if I told you that Drew Sample is the P. Ryan replacement in the form of they just bring him tight into the formation. And of course, a tight end. Like, there, there are blocks in this game. There's two plays. Shout out to Bengals Sands, the outliner. There's two plays where, where um, there's supposed to be a duo block with Sample mm -hmm. and, like, the end or linebacker uh, mm -hmm. with, with Jonah, and Sample handles them by itself. And so Jonah's just, like, looking for work because Sample is just beating the dude up by itself because he's a really good blocker. And 
now that you're saying that you could do that, I just think sky's the limit for the team, bro. Like, it sounds crazy, but that little wrinkle right there, it changes how teams are defending us now. They can't just go too high show every single week anymore, and they don't know if we're going to go under center. And the reason they can't go too high safety is because if I line up under center, that safety doesn't know should he go run out. You know, even if even if the wide receivers are in there, they don't know can he run over there. The the action under center, the play play action holds them up. So now they're forced to bring the safety into the box in case there's a run, and everything has changed around. And then you couple that with the fact that the offensive line is giving up games with just one sack. I mean, I think the Bengals, after this game, even leaving all that meat on the bone, so to speak, pause, they're the best team currently right now in football through the last four weeks of the season. Like, the last four weeks, I, I, I watched the Eagles struggle. I watched the Chiefs struggle. I watched all the top teams struggle. I watched the Bengals handily make the best teams in football look, look pedestrian. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean – a lot of people are talking about who is the best team and this and that. And I know they see the one thing about Bengals fans is a lot of us are knowledgeable, right? A lot of people came from Ohio. Ohio is a big football, just Mecca in general. And a lot of people that watch the Bengals are very knowledgeable. We are not like super biased. Like you'll see us in spaces, giving love here and there, looking at these teams, me and you, we watch a lot of teams more than just the Bengals. It's not crazy to say that the Bengals are playing like the best team in football right now. To do what you did to the 49ers, I get it. They're missing, you know, Trent Williams and Debo Samuel. But that gap of what they did to go on the road into that environment and do what they did, I don't see anybody in the NFL doing that. And then you talk about what they just did to the Bills. The Bills are a good football team. Like, don't get it twisted. Like, they still have Josh Allen who on PFF metrics was the number one quarterback in the league. They made him look pedestrian. Uh, Stefan Diggs, they were able to handle him. Dalton Kincaid had a big game, but it didn't matter. It was very similar to like the George Kittle game. Like George Kittle had a great game, didn't show up on the scoreboard. Um, the defense has played amazing. When this team is clicking on all cylinders, as you've said, they are scary. And the thing that's scary about this, you kind of talked about Drew Sample. Drew Sample, T. Huddy, Irv Smith, those were got Joe Mixon. That was what this game script was kind of written around with those guys to kind of start the game. A lot of people weren't expecting that. And so you're telling me a team that strength is the three wide receivers and you're telling me that the tight ends and the running back was eating? You're in trouble, bro. And they only gave up one sack? We're, we've been talking about this offensive line for a while. I don't know if it's because a lot of people have this pessimistic view of the Bengals offensive line just because it's been so bad for so many years. Bro, that offensive line did its thing against the Bills' pass rush, who was supposed to be the number one pass rush in football, right? So when they're clicking on all cylinders, I completely agree with you, bro. This is the best team for the last four weeks in football right now. And they're only – I don't think that they're going to slow down. I think a lot of people believe the way Joe Burrow is playing. I know there was a – Mina Combs actually put it out there. She used a stat that I love but took it to another level. Next-gen stats – they do the adjusted expected completion rate, right? And you get a either a plus or a minus on what you should complete and what you have completed. Joe Burrow, bro, ever since he's gotten back and been good, I believe it's the last four games, he is plus 15% over the expected completion percentage. That is number one in the NFL. And that's, that's a key metric because whenever I will watch Joe Burrow, that is like the Joe Burrow me metric because he's so accurate. So when I looked at him last year and the previous years, he's always having a delta over the expected completion percentage. And to start the season, he wasn't having that. He was, you know, dipping low. So that's how I knew something was wrong. But the last four weeks, bro, he's been the best quarterback in football. But let's talk about T. Huddy because you was one of the leaders of the T. Huddy Hive, man. We we talked about him. I know Jake and mine. They talked about him. Everybody has pounded the table for T. Huddy. T. Huddy delivered, bro. Like that's he makes a plays. That's a nasty combo. He makes plays, bro. He just makes plays. The 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 third down throw where Joe Burrow kind of has to throw him open, but he just throws it, and T. Huddy just boxes the guy out. When he threw the ball, I was like, "What is Joe throwing that to?" And T. Huddy just jumps up over the dudes. I mean, over that's the that's. 
that's a big target. And and one of the things I've been saying all this time is like, I understand the Bengals' philosophy on tight ends and positional value, but the utilization of the tight end for the, for Joe Burrow, people got to get used to this moving forward. You're not going to have these teams in 2026 that has Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boy. You'll have really good weapons around them, but they're going to go more, you know, offensive line protection. The one position group that doesn't get paid max dollars, but allows you to have an elite player. And Tom Brady always had his Gronk, or Troy Aikman always had, like, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, what's his name? And, you know, like, whatever, whatever, you know what I'm saying, quarterback that you can name always gets paired up with a tight end at some point because it's a it's a way to kind of cheat the system because they don't get paid the top dollars. And when you get guys like Tanner Hudson, I think Tanner Hudson, I still will go get a, another tight end, like a premier one, a premium pick next year, a premium pick, like one that could grow with Joe Burrow, learn on the fly, whatever. But pair him with like a Tanner Hudson or something like that, bro, I'm telling y'all, Joe Burrow is going to have a field day. Like, I just think that people need to see it more. And Tanner Hudson is like proof. Like, it doesn't take much for Joe Burrow to like, just because he's so good with ball placement, that if a tight end, <laughs> if a tight end, <laughs> if the tight end is is boxing a guy out, then Joe Burrow has a really good knack for just getting the the football to a location. That, and and I just feel like it's a recipe that they're going to have to go to when you can't pay twenty something million dollars to this wide receiver. This man, you could go get mid level tight ends like all over the place. Like in the draft, you could go third, fourth grade. You could go second. If they go get one of them guys, bro, I'm telling you, it's going to unlock like a different Joe Burrow that people are going to hate. That's when he's really going to go into this Tom Brady mode. And people, I'm telling y'all right now, y'all going to remember I told y'all this. The Bengals year, three, four years from now, is going to be two tight end systems. It's going to be the best offensive line that money can buy and maybe one star wide receiver. Like if Jamar, you know, like later on down the line, but that's that's a sustainable model, and you don't have to worry about paying wide receivers. And you take that same money, money and funnel it into protection, of course, because Joe Burrow isn't going to be as fast. But but Tanner Hudson to me gives you a look of what it looks like because he always makes plays. Yeah, T. Huddy always makes plays, man. He's super consistent. I kind of show on the last show, you know, him still being the second leading receiver at the tight end position. That's even increased this week. He had the four receptions for, for 45 yards. I think he's one of those sneaky good players, bro. Like there's always this under the radar tight end, whether it's like a Cam Braid or something like that, that just comes out of nowhere, right, and ends up with four or five touchdowns. I think T. Huddy definitely has that potential, and he didn't even get to start the whole season. One thing I didn't know about him, though, I did. I never knew that he was on the, the Bucks Super Bowl team, like – yeah, he was on the boat with yes. Tom Brady and them throwing that. So it's I don't a lot really... of guys on our team that got rings, bro. Yeah. You ever look at that? I didn't, bro. It's a lot. Bro, of, it's like seven, eight here. guys, bro, that got rings. It's a lot of ring bearers in there. But one dude that I have to apologize for, you guys know it. Diddy said it earlier. Drew Sample, my boy. Sample. I owe you an apology because you did your thing, man. Drew Sample, way to show up, like Zim said earlier. Uh, he ends up making the catch. Pivotal play in that game. Irv Smith, I mean, the tight ends were on fire. Joe Mixon, even though the stats might not show it, it might not show up in the stat sheet if you're just a box score demon, if you just like watching box scores and, and doing that, it's not going to stick out to you. But the way this game started off, and I know you watched the All-22 2s, it started off with two screens to Joe Mixon, like very well orchestrated screens. Um, the way that he was able to to pass block in this game was huge. The way that he was able to pick up the first down to seal the game. Like, those aren't things that are going to show on the stat sheet except the screens. But those were huge plays to get the tempo going. Yeah. I mean, and like you said, you kind of mentioned, oh, they need, a, they need another running back. People were saying this and that. He's been doing it. He's been his doing pass, it. His pass, his pass pro has been nasty. And, and he could leak out. You know, it's so crazy that they did those screens early because mm-hmm. they knew that the Bills wanted to get after Joe. The, everybody knows if you're going to beat Joe Burrow when he's playing like this, the only your only hope is to get him and, like, bring him down. 
Like, and you got to go attack them. And I thought early in the game, the Bengals offensive coordinator, uh, Brian Callahan, I thought he did a really good job at getting those screens ready in the scripted plays to make those ends think, to make Von Miller think. What is the thing I said in the Super Bowl that Pac-Man even also, he re- he said it again too, is that he said, I played on the team with Von Miller. He hates going out into the flats. He <laughs> hates it. So they started off the game running screens to that side. Then that touchdown one, I don't know who tips the pass. It's not Von Miller. But I'm telling you, they're feasting on those guys shooting up field. Joe Mixon was wide open. Like, if y'all get a chance to rewatch that play, if y'all don't know the play I'm talking about, guy bats the ball, Joe Mixon's wide open in the flat. But Joe Mixon, they were asking me about him earlier in the, in the, in the space. And, I, and they were asking me this, and I'm going to ask you. It, you know, move the box, score, the, the box score away. Is this the best version of Joe Mixon that you've seen, like, all around? Um, I think from an all-around standpoint, if you're talking about with pass blocking, it, it's tough because he's had years where he was the leading AFC rusher, right? So I'm not trying to take away from that. But if you're talking about all-around game, pass blocking, all of that, I think that it is collectively one of his best performances. I mean, I think for him to – I think he now legitimately embodies the team player. I know some people said that, um, him taking the pay cut, him doing the dirty things for the team to win. I don't think he cares about the stat sheet because you might get some running backs that are like, hey, I need my touches, right, especially you know, if those are linked to bonuses and, and stuff like that. I think he is looking good, bro. I think Mixon is a guy that when his number is called, you can depend on. So I, I do think that his overall game altogether, when you throw the blocking in there, yeah, for sure. I think he's I think he's there. I, I will say this. This this was my response to it. This is the best offensive line he's ever had. Now mm-hmm. there are there are games like like you know Sunday where he might not, he doesn't get all the opportunities you know we're a pass first team mm-hmm. but i just think that when you look at his all purpose yards in those same games he's always going to be at a, like close to 100 he averages like for the most part like all of last season and the year before he's around 90 something he teeters at 90 all purpose yards per game so I've learned to not look at just as rushing because we are such a heavy passing team in the right. RPO shotguns and stuff are just an extension of that. But I just thought like, I mean, what he had like 30 some yards catching and then like probably like 40 yards rushing. So yeah, like 70 yards or something like that. Still I thought he had a touchdown, had the touchdown. So he was able to, he should have had two. He should have had like that. That little swing passes lives rent free in my head, but mm-hmm. he, I mean, this is the best. If if Joe Burrow had, I mean, Joe Burrow, if Joe Mixon had offensive lines like this his whole entire career, I think we would talk about Joe Mixon. This is going to be a hot take. I think we would talk about Joe Mixon in the same light as like Nick Chubb and those dudes because he came into the league in 2017 and he's fifth currently in rushing yards with all of those guys that he came in ahead of mm-hmm. CMC, ahead of Kamara. Ahead of like Saquon, all these, all the dudes that everybody like clamors over, he's mm-hmm. ahead of those guys. And the only guys that are ahead of him are like guys like, um, I think like, I think it's like Leonard Fournette might be up there or something. I got somebody like that. There are guys, Dalvin Cook is ahead of him, uh, Nick Chubb is ahead of him, and then Derrick Henry is ahead of him. And then it's like one or two guys that aren't even like, oh, is it Todd Gurley? Somebody like that. But regardless. Had he had an offensive line all the time, we're talking about bottom offensive line, and he's and he's fifth. So if he had the offensive line he had right now, I just don't think. I mean, this year he's getting a thousand yards. Yeah, like he's I, getting a thousand. I think one thing that you said is this is a passing offense, and one of the things we talked about, and and people have said the Bengals don't use the tight end. Well, the fourth receiver is usually Joe Mixon. Like Joe Mixon usually ends up being the the fourth receiver with the most targets and, and most catches. Um, as that option. So that's that's another thing to consider, like you said, in our offense. I think Joe Mixon fits it perfectly. Uh, but another thing is I felt like the Bills defense tried to key in on him, but I felt like the Bengals, they did something and put a page out of a book that you kind of talked to me about last week, early in the week, about how to guard Stephon Diggs. They did a lot of double teams and stuff like that early. How do you feel about like how we were able to to really limit 
Josh Allen in that offense because that's usually like a lot of people are looking at it 18 points. That's bad for the Bills. The Bills score points. Like, say what you want about the Bills this season. One thing that they've been doing is scoring points. I feel like we came out with an approach that really slowed them down. Yeah, man. I, I thought, you know, that's the thing about the box score is like at the end of it, I thought, I thought Josh Allen did, you know, come back in the second half and has some good stuff that, that he, I think that they're, they're going to be happy on the table. I think the Bills still make the playoffs. I, I think that I think that um, a lot of people say like not nah, the Jets and Jets losing last night was big. That was major. Like the the Jets and the Dolphins losing both in the same week was so major for the Bills. Like that was that was major. Um, but uh, I was gonna say I just think that Kincaid is the new like wide receiver two three however you want to say it. I think it's gonna open up a lot more for Josh Allen. And I, Boy, started, I tried I, to tell people about Dalton Kincaid. I wish he was sure. wearing stripes. For sure. And moving forward, I just think there's going to open up a lot for him, right? I, yeah. I, I, I really don't. I think he's going to always struggle with elite defenses. Yeah. I think the game that gives him the most credit in the world is the game where he's playing against a bad defense with the Chiefs in the game that they say is supposed to be the real AFC. Those are two bad defenses just going at each other. The Bills were all injured up, and then Mahomes cooks them. It, like, go watch that game for two, three quarters. It's a, it's a, it's a weak game. Then the fourth quarter, they just, just go crazy. But aside from that, I just thought Josh Allen looked confused the whole game until he got to, like, the fourth. And then when they got momentum and Kincaid fumbled – it was just like that was it at that point. I mean, any team get up. I mean, when the when the Bengals get up on you early in the game, it's it's a it's done though anyway. It's over. You know, you know what I think about. That's the same quarterback. Remember when we won the Raiders playoff game and we went to we went out <laughs> afterwards to celebrate, right. and there was a game on, and the game was the Bills versus the Patriots. You remember that game? He like Josh Allen was dogging them, fam. Like they were killing them. And but, I'm like, we took and they use, they use those stats to this day to say this is why he's so much better. I'm like, bro, y'all ran up a score in a game against the Patriots that had no business being there. It's like they took that dude, and then it's like you see him against us, and it's like it's not the same dude. It's like Superman got some of that, like we got. That we mental. got uh, some of that kryptonite or something. We, CTB, CTB got in his think head. About, think about it. The Bengals are five and one. We got a graphic. Y'all got to follow Cincinnati Pod. This one graphic got people in a tizzy right now. We, we actually are live right now on Twitter on the Winston. Okay. Pod. So if you are watching it, nice. If you're not watching it, you can also watch it on Twitter at Cincinnati Pod. But, but this graphic, one graphic, I'm cool about the graphic because they, they feel <laughs> the it. graphic doesn't even have a caption. The graphic doesn't even have a thought. It's just a it's a factual statement. But look at how many people comment and are upset at the truth. Like if you told me I don't know what that record is, Lamar versus the Bengals, I say okay, cool. I don't have a comment. I'd be like, yeah, like he, those are his records against the Bengals. I think he's like one. In, I mean, he's three and one. I think against Burrow or something. I think, mm -hmm. but. But it, so what? But look at how many people feel threatened by that graphic because it's the truth. Burrow is five and one versus Josh Allen and Pat Mahomes. So what? And 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 it's not a coincidence that both of those quarterbacks are 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 better uh, arm arm talents. They're better strong, like strength, better athletes, all these different things. But the one thing that I always come back to is Joe Burrow and the mental. Not mind you, Joe Burrow doesn't have to go directly up against Josh Allen. But me and you talked about this one time before. If I say, bro, if my team, I go get my five right now, and I say, meet me at the basketball court, is my five versus your five? I'm walking away from the game, regardless if it's a team game, and say, bro, I just took you out. And the person on the other side of the court or whatever, they know that. So mm -hmm. when people be like, that's the, the record is in the quarterback stat. Like, you know who on the other side of the court, you know who's on the other side of the field, you know who you're going up against in all of those matchups. You got that, and then you got the guy named Ludini, who you named the Lou father, that has a thing where he cooks these dudes up. 
and they don't look as great as they do against other against other teams. And I think that that's another thing that people need to talk about a lot more is that this guy Lou Anarumu has put together these defensive packages in all of these games, all unique, all unique game plans in all of these. He showed Josh Allen some drop eight stuff that I didn't see him show in the playoff game. I thought in a playoff game he played him pretty straight up. He wasn't dropping too much. I just thought that they they did what um what we when we interviewed Zach Carter and they caged him in and they forced him to make sure they say yeah we dare you to run and I thought that that mentally like was a block in his head like when he went to go think about what he wanted to do so it's one of those things man like moving forward as long as this defense is playing on that level and Joe Burrow plays on the level that he play he's been playing for the last four weeks particularly the last two weeks. There is not, I, I must say it straight in the camera, and I don't care where this goes. There is not another team in the National Football League that can beat Joe Burrow when he's playing at that level. If he's playing at that level, there is not another team that can beat him because of the combination of Lou Anarumu and the defense that makes sure that you don't score on these key components. In I mean, on these key parts of the game, these games, these are high flying offices that are not eclipsed in 20 points. Yeah, man. The Lou defense is – it's crazy, bro. Like, I'm – you go into all of these games very confident because you know that he's just going to be playing chess against whoever it is. And someone mentioned in the space earlier, is Lou allowing teams – and I feel like we've seen this before. He kind of allows teams – or it seems. I'm not going to say that he does. But it seems like he allows teams – to think certain stuff is open, especially when it's on that first drive, right? Like you watch the Bills come down and score a touchdown. And then the next time that they score a touchdown, it's not until the late fourth quarter. Like, bro, there was a time and period where they had only put up three points through like two quarters, like the second quarter, third quarter. Really, it was getting into the fourth. And then they finally scored another one. Lou is just different, man. Like, I don't know why people don't take him serious. Lou is probably the best defensive coordinator in the league. And you're going to look at numbers and advanced analytics and be like, well, the yards and, and, and this and that, but they're not scoring. Look at the red zone. Look at the drives where he's forcing punts. Look at the confusion. Like, Lou is a guy where you got to throw the tape on. You got to look at the concepts. He's throwing out stuff like double QB spy. Who's doing that? Let me know in the league who is doing those kind of looks, man. Let me know who's running man on the first two downs. And then on the second down, he, you think it's man again. And then he hits you with a quarter zone or something crazy like that. Like, he's he's really like that. Like, I don't know why they be sleeping on Lou like that. To the point where now you've got all of these concepts happening, all of these guys getting slowed down. And, you know, Josh Allen just – Kind of looks pedestrian for Josh Allen standards. Like, if we're going to keep it a buck, like, sure, that's a good game for, for you know, Andy Dalton. That's a pretty good game. But, like, for Josh <laughs> Allen, that's not a good game. That's not a good game, fam. Yeah, it's not. I mean, bro, having 10 points, they, they're lucky, you know, to get the – I'm not going to say lucky, but them getting the, the points at the end of the game, mm. it makes it look, you know, a lot closer than what it really was. Um. And, and apparently, as we're recording this right now, Shiesty is in the bed. He apparently goes to sleep at 8 o'clock. Like, that's why he we, – we can't get him on the Cincinnati podcast if he's going to sleep. If he's going to sleep at 8, Shiesty. Hey, bro, the day that – hey, look. The day we get that nine interview, like, the internet is going to crash. <laughs> Shiesty, if, hey, Shiesty, if you hear us and you want us to get the interview, bro, we would do whatever – it don't it don't gotta be at eight, bro. We'll move whatever. It could be at 8 a.m. I don't give a damn. <laughs> that that yeah, that's gonna be special because we got the location gonna be important for that. We ain't doing that virtual. We gotta we pull can't up. Do that virtual. Nah, we gotta yeah, pull but up. yeah, it, it's gonna happen. But um, yeah, man, I, I'm just I'm really, really happy uh we in a, a at a good spot. And like I said, if the if the Bengals and Joe Burrow are playing like this, I just I look at the schedule and I'm just like that the 49ers game was so important to me. And yeah. everybody was like, bro, like we I mean, it you could lose that and you could go AFC, you know, you got to win those conference things and talking to me about sideburgers and stuff. I'm like, nah, like I need to, I need this team to know 
Like, there's no way that you can sit there in a, with a straight face. People are going to try to do it. Wait till 49ers come off that break. Wait till they come off that break oh, with Chase Young. I would them not boys, play the 49ers. Them boys about to come back on a streak, coming back with Debo and them and, and Trent Williams. And then people going to – like, everybody going to go back to reference when the Bengals smacked them. And, and, and when they did it, I, I get it. They came off of that fluky loss that they had. But when the Bengals did it, they smacked them, where it was, like, like very clear – that even if they did have Debo or whatever, like it wasn't enough to fill the gap on the on the shellacking that that game was to me. And um, I thought that the Bengals players needed that one, and I think everybody needed that. I think Shiesty needed to know that there's not that bro. That defensive line is, is is crazy, and the only ones that I think can mess with it are the ones in the in the north, like you know what I'm saying, like outside of that, and then the Eagles. So like, if you're doing that to that team then it is what it is at that point. And I just think that the Bengals offensive line is playing at a different level that we haven't seen in a long time. I don't really got – yeah, I mean, I mean, what else is there to say about, like – Man, T was cooking, bro. T. T, T was T. cooking. T was doing his thing, man. I felt like it was, it was about to happen, man. Eight receptions, 110 yards, showing, like – what he could do off script and out of structure was was dope to see because the Bills kind of came in with a game plan, eliminate Joe Mixon, right? Because Joe Mixon ran crazy on him in the Bills game, in the pub in the Buffalo game. And then also it was let's take away Jamar Chase. Let's focus on him. So when they did that, and I always talk about this, the Bengals counterpunch is crazy. It's like a Tyson, it's like a Tyson counterpunch where we come in with this left hook. With T. Higgins, like, yeah, we're going to hit you with that jab with Jamar. We're going to hit you with that haymaker with Uno. But then when we hit you with that left, T. Higgins is just a crazy counterpunch to be able to come back with. We even saw Yoshi get a get a target in this game. The Bengals have so many weapons, bro. Like, you don't know. Charlie, Charlie coming back this week. Charlie's back. Like, <laughs> you really don't want to see us right now. I, I know people are going to call it cocky and this and that. We analyze this game. We know this team. You do not want to see this team right now if you're anybody on the schedule. You kind of mentioned the last show, looking at the schedule. I don't know. I don't know when this team is. I don't know, bro. Like, I don't. They could I, I look. The I, they I could look. Really I look. I look at, you know, like, I want to – we're going to take a brief – I just want to talk – a couple talking points. I guess the Texans one, to me. Yeah. It is what we should focus on, you know. Like, right and we'll now. have we'll have a way to talk about it on Especially, Thursday. I mean, yeah, I'm not trying to say that. I hope nobody takes that as you know Texans disrespect because we recognize what CJ Stroud did. Uh, we recognize yeah. what what that um, what that uh, new coach over there is doing with D'Amico Ryan's. I think he's a yeah. great coach. I don't. Sorry, Browns fans. I don't think they missed Deshaun Watson. I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. After, oh, of course not. What I, just happened? Like, I mean, you know. and, and then and then you couple that with the picks and everything that they received. The but picks. what I was gonna I was gonna say is that the Texans just just this is the thing about the 49ers win to me. It's mm -hmm. like all around, it's hard to pick out a weakness unless you pick like you're like nitpicking at the offensive line, maybe for them a little bit, but yeah. outside of that. I mean, I don't value Shadavius War like that, but I think in that scheme, he's really good, like, for that scheme, right? right? right. Um, and then Hufanga is the safety, and the other safety doesn't get enough credit. Like, they're really good. Yeah. But 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 the thing is, like, you're going to see a trend every single game that we play coming up. There's all – is gaping holes on <laughs> on, uh, on, on flaws that yeah. these teams have that are right there in your face. The Texans' yeah. pass defense – Yes, everybody's talking about the Stroud uh, had the five tutties, but what about Baker Mayfield and them running up thirty on them? Yeah, like no, like yeah. nobody talking about that. And then the week before that, Stroud had like one forty and lost to the yeah, Panthers. The Panthers. So, Panthers so, so, so like I get everybody like it's wishful thinking around the thing, but then I'm thinking about it. Y'all know the Texans also have like the worst run game in in all of NFL, and the starting running back is still on um uh, Pierce is still on IR. So even if even if you're a Stroud, like I, I'm sorry, Ohio State fans, I gotta cook y'all this week. I, no, it's not personal, but even if you're saying Stroud is him, you think a Ludini system 
is about to let a guy that's just going to throw and like not run. Like, you know, like there's no threat of running and you're just saying he's going to cock back and throw it and throw for 400 plus yards on the Bengals and be successful against a Lou and a Romo defense after the Bengals just did what they did to the Bills, after they just did what they did to remember when we played the Rams. When Stafford was coming off of multiple 300 yard games. Remember when we played Geno? He was coming off of good games. He had five reds on track. So he's seen all of these quarterbacks. And then you're like, yeah, but Stroud is different. He's going to go crazy. I'm like, nah, bro. Like, I just, he, I think he's going to have success. And I think he's a fine quarterback. But the problem is to me is if your team isn't able to be multiple, Ludini is just going to feast on that one thing that you don't do well and make you do it all game. He's the, the modern version of what Belichick does in his philosophies. If you don't run the football good, you better learn how to run the football good this Sunday because Stroud isn't going to see a look that he likes. Like this whole Sunday, he's not going to make him feel comfortable. And if they're not able to get pressure, they're just going to go coverage. And then the same thing keeps on going. Lamar, the, the following week on the Thursday, you think a dude that's leading the NFL and fumbles at 10, you think that that's a sustainable product? You think that a guy that I'm, I was told, and you can ask a purple person in here tonight, They'll tell you right now, this is the best team we put around Lamar. How come Lamar is throwing for two? Like, in, remember, it's all about Joe Burrow and his weapons. Finally, he has weapons. How come he's averaging 217 yards a game throwing the football? You think that he's going to come out there this time with a healthy Joe Burrow and just go crazy? Like, a, a, after you just seen the Bengals just do that to the foot? Like, come on, bro. I, I, I think y'all not being realistic on what y'all thinking. That I think they're looking at Joe Burrow's outfits – and not looking at the the play on the, the field by him Joe playing Burrow well, play, he cooked in the second half, retweaked the retweet on one leg, on one leg. Like, all right, you can think it's sweet if you want. Like, we know, and if we're talking about M and T State, we know he knows about M and T very well. You know he does, right? What did he do at M and T Stadium? What did he do at the bank? Did he make a deposit, or did he <laughs> did he make a withdrawal? Hot takes. How the hundred players. Tyler Huntley played better than Lamar has ever played up until the game that he just played just now. Tyler Huntley, like as much as they talk down about Tyler Huntley in the playoff game, he yeah. played better than any Lamar game against the Bengals up until the game they just well, had. I'm not, I'm not gonna look ahead of the Texans, man. We're gonna handle that business. Y'all need to handle y'all business too. Cause last time I checked, Miles Garrett just said that he's taking down Lamar. Pause, which is crazy. He also said he's taking Joe Burrow. Um, over Lamar, so just let that marinate. Somebody, somebody, smart man, said that he's taking him. But you talk smart about man. Feasting. Speaking of feasting, I'm gonna toss it to our friends at Midwest Best Barbecue. <laughs> Shout out to Midwest Best Barbecue, 669 Justice Court in Loveland, Ohio. They have heard so much about Midwest Best Barbecue. I feel like we helped um, push that, but they are a great restaurant. Um, just had Jordan Battle there. Just had Corey Dillon there. Bro, people aren't going there for no reason. CTB was just there. <laughs> Go get some Midwest Best Barbecue. Uh, one of the best places to get wings, barbecue. They got the G-Funks. They got all of it, the Uno wings. Check it out. Uh, brisket. They even got brisket salad, fam. I'm still thinking about that brisket salad. Um, go go hit up Tim and Nicole. Let them know Ace and Zim sent you 669 Justice Court in Loveland, Ohio. Some of the best wings that I've ever had in my life. No cap.
Um, but it's not them, even close. It's not even close. Not even close at all. Um, kind of like the 49ers game. Not even close. Uh, but or or like the Lamar 2021 game when he lost 41 17. Like that, like that close. Like that close. Oh, okay. Shiesty MVP odds are back up. They back up right now, plus 800. They were plus 700 week one. Week five, they were plus 5,000. So if you were a diehard person that listened to this podcast, probably knew Joe Burrow was was eventually going to get healthy and we were going to go on a run, that plus 5,000 is looking good right now. I think I honestly think it is realistic that Joe Burrow could be in – as as a winner of this MVP. And the reason that I say that is we've seen what the Bengals look like without him, right? When when Joe wasn't Joe and he was hurt, they did the graphic in the Sunday night football game showing the difference between week three and like now, right? Wasn't able to plant, wasn't himself. And when the Bengals didn't have that, even though they had all of these weapons, this great defense, they weren't able to win games. Ever since he's been back, he's been – Arguably the best quarterback in football. There's a lot of guys that are out there that are having some shaky seasons. You talk about Tua. Look what just happened to him against Kansas City. Pat Mahomes, that offense has been up and down all season. They even struggled in that game. Josh Allen, you know, the Bills right now are sitting at five and four. Uh, There's not really a standout right now for the MVP, which is clearing the path for Joe Burrow. If the Bengals are able to go on a streak with Joe Burrow, and they end up, you know, possibly one of the top three seeds in the AFC or end up taking the division. Like maybe you could throw Lamar in there. You probably, but like Lamar isn't having the greatest season. Like he's, they're winning, but it's not like 2019 Lamar. I feel like this thing is wide open right now. How you feel about it, bro? I feel like it's wide open, bro. Like, I, I know my top five teams in the NFL, I think right now, the one thing that I look at, like I was talking about earlier, like I watched the Eagles struggle against the Commanders. I watched, like, and that's who I think is probably the best team in the NFL, right? And I watched them struggle against teams. And then you watch the Chiefs struggle against teams. And, you, mm-hmm. and then you watch, like, the outcomes of some of these games, you know, and then, you know, you talk about, like, the Ravens. I, I, I think they're really good. I just don't know, bro. Like, I don't know. Like, like I just, I don't know. Like, I, I don't see enough of consistency to me. And then you think about the quarterbacks that they went against. When they go up against, like, some other ones coming up, their final games, I would I rather take our final eight versus their final eight. I, like, we're playing a backup Cousins and, all, you know what I'm saying? Like, the backup the Cousins, you know, Minshew. I know they lost to Garner Minshew, but, like, the top none of these teams are like really like blow you out the water like all around and say like this is a like the best team. The Bengals though defensively have been carried like throughout the whole entire season. And then when you look at the last four games, the level of competition and them not giving any of those teams over twenty points. None of those teams went over twenty points. And to me, here's here's the thing: like, who are some of the best teams they beat? Right, the Lions. Don't know if the Lions are really proven, right? The Lions have Jared, Jared Goff on the road is trash. Like, sure. Okay, winning team, cool. Seahawks, this was a team last year that got blown out in the first round. Like, they're are they are they the best team in the NFC West? They're not the 49ers. They're not a team that's you know, they haven't been a team that's going deep in the playoffs since Russell Wilson was there. Um, and then you look at, like you said, Indianapolis game, that was clearly a hiccup for them. Uh, they played the Texans early on. The Texans aren't a team that's like they're they're not here yet. Like CJ Stroud, they've got him. They've got some potential. They might be a playoff team. Who knows? They might be able to sneak in there. But there's not that standout win yet for me. And then you lost you lost to the Steelers, which is kind of crazy. I don't know how that really I don't know how that really happened. Kenny Pickett, it's a little nasty. You beat. <laughs> Joe Burrow was on one leg, and he only beat us by three. And Lamar fumbled. and and they got and they got to play this. Fumbled. They they let it forget. Lamar fumbled in our territory where we could have just got that, but then they called the penalty. And then of course, you know, he escaped that one with a victory because he made the scramble. So that was still a close game. Right, right. There's there's not a resume on there like the Bengals where they beat the Bills team, they beat that same Seahawks team as well, and they beat the 49ers. 
I mean, you can't control your schedule. I get that. But I would like to see y'all do that to the 49ers. Let's see y'all do that <laughs> into the Seahawks to the 49ers. Let's see that. I, I don't I don't see them beating the 49ers at all, bro. And I, I'm gonna tell you one thing with the way that the amount that they blitz, I think it's a bad recipe for that Dolphins game. Yeah, like Dolphins, they 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 feed off a of team's blitz. I, I think they're a good team, but the Ravens are always good during the regular season. Like, and yeah. we're not in November and December. That's when they start to fall off. Like it's really December right. when they kind of so I'm right. I'm not saying that they're a bad team. Don't get this twisted. I'm just saying when you talk about the <laughs> the tier of Bengals, Chiefs, Bills, even like how we came into this season, I don't know if they're there yet until I see them get some of those statement wins against some of those bigger competitors. We'll see them in two weeks. I, I so feel you, like you got another you, chance. You got you another know what, chance in two weeks. You know the takeaway I think is I, I just maybe I'm just thinking about it. Uh Bengals run the north. I mean, back to back AFC North champions. You gotta come I mean, and take it from us, straight up. <laughs> and the Bengals running north. I, I don't know if there's any of it. I mean, come and take it from us, Dan. <laughs> come and take it from us, Dan. Yeah, we'll see you next Thursday. Get past the get past the Browns first. Get the Browns. Uh, but thank you guys for tuning in to the Winston podcast. Definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. We appreciate you guys. Definitely be sure to check us out on all podcast platforms, wherever you listen to them, where they're. Follow Zim at Zim Hooday on Twitter, at Zim underscore Hooday on Instagram. Follow me at New Stripe City on Instagram and Twitter. And follow our Wincinnati Pod account at Wincinnati Pod. We appreciate you guys. And we will be back Thursday to talk about this Houston game. Appreciate you guys. Take it easy. And, of course, we're going to end this with the Hooday. Hooday. It's an exciting time to be a Bengals fan. I'm AC Zell. We got a special show as always. The voice of the Bengals. Oh, and four. Willie Anderson. Corey Dillon. The name of this thing is called Winston Eddie, and I'm not going to stop. Talk to us about that role of I'm still going to give you the same AJ. I'm going to work as hard as I can to be the best. I've been working ever since I met y'all, boy. Yeah. I got to get your top five receivers. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out for us.